Couch Potato Diary. Happy Monday. Happy mm -hmm. home opening day. My name is Peter Klein. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. This, of course, is the Couch Potato Diary presentation of the Catlinato cast. This is what happens when you record multiple podcasts in a day. Uh, welcome. Let's get right into it as we focus on the Toronto Blue Jays on the home opener, letting a little bit of natural light in so I can get, you know, a little bit of a little bit of sunlight, maybe a little bit of uh, a better mood, talking about what was, by and large, a putrid week for the Toronto Blue Jays that starts with them getting no hit by a pitcher that like 10 people in the world had heard of before and ends with a bit of a lackluster performance against the New York Yankees. And the in-between wasn't awesome either. And the main concern right now, this will probably lead a lot of weeks on this show, it's the offense. The bats are just not good enough. And the problem is, is like, the I mean, the one problem is, talent. Uh, but the other problem is that this whole approach that, look, I, I'm going to probably say this a lot. I was duped. I was fooled. That's embarrassing for me. I apologize. It's atrocious. But the new approach at the plate, you look at some of these at-bats that these guys are having, and you tell me that this new great approach is working. Um, Joe Siddle kind of called it out the other day. It's like, this isn't like, it's guys taking pitches, but it's not them being patient because they're taking the wrong pitches. And, it, it, like, they're swinging at pitches they absolutely shouldn't be swinging at. There's just been a whole lot of awful at-bats for this Toronto Blue Jays team early in the season. And for a team that is already walking a very fine line when it comes to how bad this offense could be, to just throw at-bats away is not something that I think you can do. Like, this is... You look at the lineup out there on Sunday. This is not the lineup of a contending team. Um, it's just not. Like, it, it's it's so bad. And it, it's highlighted more when someone like Bo starts to struggle. And it, admittedly, the end of that Yankee series, it looks like he's starting to come out of it a little bit. So that'll be good, unless he takes another 99-mile-an-hour fastball right off the funny bone. But it's just, it's awful at bat after awful at bat. And it, it makes it, I think, even more frustrating when a guy who's actually hitting right now isn't in the lineup, and that's Davis Schneider. They have been working him in at times, but he was on the bench more often than not, I believe, this week, and that just, that can't happen. He comes up with a big home run against Josh Hader, um, and look, he, he is not immune to the poor at-bats either, but, like, as it's going right now, and, like, I... I I still think there's a lot there with Vigio, but as it's going right now, Clement at third and Schneider at second seems to be a pretty good way to go uh, at this point. Clement is absolutely going to, to cool down and probably so is Schneider, but right now those are two of the only guys who are making contact on this team. So I, I just, Schneider specifically is one that I think you absolutely have to put into, put, put into your lineup. Um, the one that was really concerning to me was the Yankee home opener on Friday. Marcus Stroman, fine pitcher. And, like, pitchers get paid, too, and all of those things. But he has had the exact same game plan. He has had the exact same plan of attack for years. There is no fooling. No surprises in what Marcus Stroman is looking to do. He is looking to pound the lower part of the zone, get ground balls. He doesn't have overpowering stuff, so he's going to use a bit of movement, and he's going to try to to get some ground balls and piece together five or six innings. And the Blue Jays looked like they had never seen him before. That was really troubling to me. When, like, it just, they, they, they said in the pregame, this might actually be a good one for the Jays because you look at some of the hits that they've had. It's been on pitches low in the zone and they've been able to, to go the other way on it. So maybe they have a bit of a field day here against Marcus Stroman. And early on, it was like they had never seen this guy pitch before. And when he would make mistakes, they were just flat out missing him. And maybe that is the... Um, the, the optimistic view and the, uh, the, 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 the upside of things, I just, I, I find it very troubling when there are very obvious drill those pitches and this team is missing them. So maybe that's an upside is that they'll eventually just start crushing those. But I do think that this is something that is a little bit concerning for this Blue Jays team. But that was the one where it was like they had no idea. Um, in terms of the upside for, for Toronto, it does seem like Vladdy is hitting the ball hard again. The one thing that is frustrating me, a couple of things that are frustrating me, one, his swing decisions are way off this year. And I I don't know if he just isn't 
wrapping his head around the new approach that they're trying to talk about or what it is, but he generally has a pretty good eye and swing choice has never been a real problem for him. It's at times been what's happened after he swings, but one or no in the count and he'll swing at pitches off the plate on either side. And it's like, what, what are we doing here? And another thing that has frustrated me a little bit, he's kind of hitting in the two hole as if he's like Alfredo Griffin at times or Manuel Lee where, okay, well, lead off guy got on. Let's see if we can move him over. It's like, bah, 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 bah. the team scored two runs in a series against Houston this week. Let's not just worry about station to station. Hey, you're, you're one of the RBI guys. So if you hit the bejesus out of the ball and Springer happens to get to third, sweet. But Vlad should be looking to drive the ball and looking to get runners in. And there've been a couple of times where Springer gets on second and Vlad, first thing that he can get to go the other way, he does it. And good fundamental baseball, sure, that ain't what Vladdy's here to do. Vlad's here to drive runs in. And when you have Bo Bichette, not even hitting his weight behind him, then you, you kind of need to be be driving those in. So that, that's been a little bit frustrating uh, for me at times. But like I said, Bo, Bo does seem to be making some better contact. So hopefully that is a, a bit of progress. Um, another one who's been fine is Justin Turner. He had a bit of a slow week in, in that opener, but then he turns it around and ha has been excellent since. Has made some really hard contact and has had some really rough luck. You, you look at um, uh, one Houston game, I believe it was, where he ripped one and Pena makes an excellent play at shortstop uh, that would have given the Blue Jays the lead early on in a game. Um, and I think that was the one they ended up winning. But the, the one issue we saw it on Sunday is signing a guy who is predominantly a DH because you take him out of the lineup and all of a sudden Kevin Biggio is batting fifth. And again, that is like it, it, that looked like 2019 when Vlad got called up the first time and Bo gets called up. I was like, okay, well, these got, they got these two awesome guys, not a ton else. Um, that's what it looked like. And so if you, you need to keep Springer in the lineup, or sorry, if you need to keep Turner in the lineup um, on days where someone else needs to DH, then Turner's playing third. So you either put out a, you either take one of your better hitters out of the lineup or you put one of your worst defenders out in the field because there are going to be times where Springer needs to DH. There's probably going to be times where Bo needs to DH or Vlad needs to DH or something along those lines. Or you want to get both Kirk and Jansen in. Um, those... The, those games are going to be very difficult for the Blue Jays to kind of work their way through uh, because he is one of their better hitters, but the fielding at third base has, has seemed to elude him at times this season, and so you get quite concerned with how things are going there. Another problem that I have, uh, very negative, I, I was just, I was really down on the team this week. They go two and four this week, but the two games that they win, they get three pass balls against the Yankees to get a bit of support. Now, they uh, like Kikuchi pitched out of his mind, and I don't have that in my rundown today, but it should be noted, Kikuchi was tremendous against the Yankees Friday afternoon. Uh, ju just a, a phenomenal, phenomenal outing from him. But they get a little bit lucky with those, and who knows how the rest of the game goes if that's, you know, but like they, they still, they, they get the shutout win, so it doesn't whatever, but still... Not the most encouraging sign. And then the other game that they win, they need Altuve to kick a ball. They need him to get picked off at third for no good goddamn reason. And then you you end up getting a, a big hit late. And again, well-pitched ball game by your team. Um, it just, and like, offense just needs a little bit of help. And that's the, the big concern is that the two wins they got this week, neither of those really gave you a whole lot of confidence. Um, but Alejandro Kirk has not given me a whole lot of confidence either. Houston didn't take him seriously at all. And that ends with Altuve getting picked off at third base. So there's a little bit there. But it is very obvious to people that Alejandro Kirk um, is, will, will take his time with some things. And I understand the body type. It's easy to call him lazy. I don't think it's that. I, I just... I think he just kind of relaxes when he shouldn't. Like, you, you need to be uh, MMA and boxing, right? Protect yourself at all times. You just need to be aware at all times. That can be mentally taxing, sure. But you kind of need to do it when you're catching. Um, and then the throws to second base are just all over the place. The Yankees ran all over him. Volpe steals second and third, ends up scoring. Um, he needed a heck of a play from Bo to end up getting a tag. I believe it was on Cabrera. Now he ends up getting second on a balk anyway, which is a bad call, but still. Um, like, he needs his fielders to bail him out on every throw. And I, I think it's becoming a problem. And again, like, he can't just be a DH. They already have that, and the guy who's doing that is better at it than him. So he needs to get this catching thing figured out, or maybe it's just not going to work. And look, it's been a rough go for the uh, potential breakout stars 
uh, episode we did to start this year. Because I thought, like, hey, Bowden Francis, coming off of the year he had, looked electric in the spring, and he's going to come out, and he, he's, like, he, he's not going to be, he's obviously not going to be the best pitcher, but he might have the best numbers. And uh, he, he doesn't have it. He is missing up in the zone so much and getting ripped apart. He, like, he just misses his spots all over the place. I I, I think it is a, a bit of a concern for uh, for this team. We'll get to that in a little bit. So w- with the offense that I am concerned about, one of the things that I liked that the Blue Jays did back in 2020 was they recognized early on, hey, our bullpen's not good enough. They went out, acquired uh, Simber, acquired Richards, and I think they may, I think they got one more guy in that. Either way, they went out and acquired a couple of guys who they could put into their bullpen immediately. It was like May or June. It's like, we need to fix this now. Well, the offense needs to be fixed now. And so I have a couple of candidates who I would like to see the Blue Jays trade for. And this isn't like, oh, let's get a depth piece. The, the Jays need to figuratively and literally start hitting home runs. Um, like, they, they tried for it with Shohei Otani. They finished second. You don't then get 66% of a Shohei Otani. You get nothing. So I, I think that this is a front office that recognizes that there is a lot of pressure on them. And it is a front office that recognizes that this is a team that I, I think needs a bit of a drastic move. Um, that They didn't end up doing it with anyone else in free agency, aside from Justin Turner, which has been a fine addition. But as your best, it's a bit of a problem. But uh, the, the three that I, I have kind of targeted, the one, you guys know this one already. I've talked about it before. Luis Robert Jr. out of uh, Chicago. The White Sox are already real bad. They're 1-8 to start the season. And it... It feels like it, it is time to to really blow this thing up. So I think Toronto, you get Robert. He plays a good center, a very good center field. Um, I'm sure he would be fine in left. And Varsho, you have him figure it out. Um, but you, th- that's one like you just you make it work because um, he would be such an electric addition to this lineup and something that is desperately needed. Um, th- this one a little bit different, but Luis Arise, the second baseman. For the Miami Marlins. They again are off to a really difficult start to the season. Um, Alcantara isn't coming back until like maybe the middle of the season. Who knows? uh, As he deals with with Tommy John surgery. Um, This is a guy who's been a batting champ before. I mean, we're seven games in. So it's just a slow start. It it is what it is. He's batting 268. Um, But this guy was flirting with 400 points last season. He would be a great just get on base guy and keep the line moving for, for this Toronto team plays a fine second base. So that would be the one that I would look at. Um, and then Ryan McMahon would absolutely be the consolation prize of all of this. He hit a walk-off grand slam the other day for Colorado. Traditionally, his home road splits aren't great. Um, he's a 219 hitter on the road and he plays in Colorado. So you do worry about that sort of a thing, but it's not like Toronto is just like center field of the polo grounds the whole way around. Like it's not Coors, But it's not a pitcher-friendly ballpark. So I think McMahon might be able to fit in, put him at everyday third base, and give the middle of this lineup a bit of a boost. Because I just, I think, I think you need to recognize early that this lineup isn't it. And I don't know who you think is going to turn it around to make this a playoff caliber lineup, but I would not be optimistic about it. So those are just a few of the guys who I, I am looking at. But finally, the Blue Jays return home tonight as they take on the Seattle Mariners after a bit of a difficult road trip. They do go four and six. Like I said, two of the the wins don't give you a lot of confidence and all of the losses felt really bad. And it it just, it felt like they were completely outmatched in more games than they weren't. And that is not a diff or that that is not a great sign. And I I think that there is pressure early for this team. Um, Maybe not necessarily standings wise or anything like that. Although the American league is very good this year, but I do think that there is pressure on Ross Atkins um, I don't think Mark Shapiro. I, I think the, the the new stadium basically is his baby, and uh, he's going to be president here for a very long time. Uh, but I do think there's pressure on John Schneider. And the thing that is getting me, it is the home opener. They are unveiling, uh, like half of the stadium has been renovated. So we're, we're going to get to see that tonight. And just being on social media for the day hasn't been a lot of buzz. Just not that I'm seeing anyway. There hasn't been a whole lot of excitement. All right, finally, home opener is here. It just feels like, okay, well, yeah, they're going to play Seattle. That's gone great before at home, right? So we'll, we'll see what happens. But it is a, a tough time with, with March Madness. Um, everyone loved WrestleMania last night, and there's the, the thing with the sun today. So, so that is taking up a lot of the airspace. But still, this is 
the the least amount of buzz there's been for a Blue Jays home opener in quite a few years. Um, lastly, a, a guy who has pitched uh, opening days for Toronto before, Alec Manoa gets into a, a single-A game to continue his rehab process, and it didn't go well. Now, he says the results don't matter, which are easy to say when the results are bad, but I do think they kind of matter a little bit. Obviously, it matters that he's building up back, back up his arm strength and, and getting himself back into game shape, uh, whatever that means for him, and all of that, but... He has now pitched exactly two games against real human beings who were trying, and neither of them have gone well, and both of them I think you could categorize fairly easily as disasters. So that is, I think, a major concern here for, for Toronto, because it, it just feels more and more like he's cooked. And if he's not, it's going to be one start he's great, one start he's not. Like, I, I just, I don't know if you're ever going to be able to get consistency out of this guy. And we, we talked coming into the season, like, the starting pitching depth feels like it's better than it was last year. Well, Francis has been hit all over the yard in two games. Again, against Houston and New York, but you pitch in the American League East, my guy. You're going to have tough matchups basically every time you're going out there to pitch. Not this week because he's pitching against Colorado, but aside from that. Um, Mitch White hasn't really done anything that makes you feel like, oh, well, this is the guy that's going to take over. And uh, Ricky Tiedemann has been up and down in his first couple of starts in AAA. So all of a sudden, okay, well, we have all these guys for these spots, and now all of them are a little, eh. And again, what feels like a strength for the Blue Jays every fifth day turns into a bit of a problem. So now looking ahead to the week, on Monday today, it'll be Jose Barrios against Luis Castillo, Tuesday against Seattle, uh, Bassett goes against Kirby, and Wednesday it'll be Kikuchi against Gilbert. They have the off day Thursday, Friday it is Gosman against Feltner, um, Saturday it'll be Francis against Dakota Hudson, and Sunday it'll be Jose Barrios against Kyle Freeland. Um, I'm a little worried they're on the wrong side of the pitching matchup in all three against the Seattle Mariners. Seattle's strength is 100% their pitching staff. And they, like, they, they're they trying to out-Blue Jay the Blue Jays right now with an offense that's just getting by and a pitching staff that is absolutely fantastic. And they're not dealing with the injury to their ace right now. By the way, that Gosman start was a little bit concerning. Not so much the, the results, but 91 was where he was topping out. And that's, that I think is a very, very worrying sign. Um, he gets Colorado in the opener of their series on Friday. It feels like this is a 500 week for Toronto. I, I wonder if they maybe get one they don't deserve against Seattle and then lose one they shouldn't against Colorado or the sweep and sweep. Um, either way, it feels like a 500 week to me for the Blue Jays. All right, that's going to do it for today's Catlin Autocast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, you can follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm at PrimetimeKlein, twitch.tv slash PrimetimePK, and you can email this show, Couch Potato Diary, at yahoo.com. Uh, coming up on regular Couch Potato Diary today, we're going to look at the playoff races in the NBA and the NHL. And WrestleMania is in the books, so now we get to look ahead. What is next for the WWE? Plus, it's UFC 300, so we look at the storylines going into this marquee event. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. If you're listening, make sure you leave a review. If you're watching, make sure you like and comment, and I'll talk to all of you later.